Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. And together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear God's word to us in scripture. A reading from the second book of Kings. A man came from Bashalisha, bringing food from the first fruits to the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. He set it before them, they ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In your bulletin, we'll read Psalm 145. Responsorily. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. That the peoples may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. The Lord is faithful in all his words and merciful in all his deeds. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The 
a reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of the glory, he may grant that you may strengthen in your inner being your, with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory, Glory to thee, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up to the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, six months wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon's Peter, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now, there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over, over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who is about to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached land toward which they were going. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. In the name of God, ground, word, life. Amen. Please, Amen. Be, please be seated. But what are they among so many people? It was beautiful yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah. That's why people come to Maine, I think, yesterday. You know, it was, a, it, was, it was a perfect day for porch sitting or lawn mowing or farmers marketing getting out on the water or eating clams at a picnic table, just greasy enough to be authentic, you know? I hope that you had a chance to enjoy it. I know I did. There is so much here, isn't there? This place, the world. I mean, there's so much life, so much is alive. Now, there are stresses, of course, more and more so. Another heat wave is building in the West. And those fires, at least, you know, the sunsets will get prettier and prettier as that smokes up in the upper atmosphere. One, one bright point there. But even with the challenges, there is so much life happening all around us. 
the riches of God's glory, the, the, the fullness of God that St. Paul prays about for his friends in Ephesus. Now to him whom by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Now our readings this week set us up for that teaching about the abundance of God that pours down upon us using one of the few stories found in all four Gospels, the feeding of the 5,000. The abundance, the, the super abundance of God. And this week, you don't need a PhD in New Testament studies to, to see the connection between the four readings, right? You know, in, in the Old Testament reading, you know, Elisha attends a feeding miracle. They ate and have some left. The psalmist tells us that God satisfies the needs of every living creature. In the epistle, you know, we, we, we are told of God's power accomplishing abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine. And then the 5,000 were, were fed from the five barley loaves that some boy had. And still there were 12 baskets of fragments left. Abundance. But abundance isn't always where our first thoughts go, is it? We are usually quite conscious of scarcity, or too often our notions of abundance are distorted. The sea is an exhaustible resource. You know, the oil will run out. And where we do have resources, we far too often doubt their importance, doubt their impact. I mean, that's St. Andrew's point here. You know, he noticed that a boy had five loaves of bread and a couple of fish. But then he asks, what are they among so many people? Because really, I mean, what are five loaves and two fishes to an army's worth of people? Nothing. I mean, if, if we headed down to coffee hour and Mary pulled me aside and said, we only have three scones, should I put them out? What would I say? I mean, I'd probably say sure, but mostly not to hurt Mary's feelings or whoever baked them, you know, <laughs> not supposing that the feeding done on that trinity of scones would amount to anything. I'd, I'd be right about that for all practical purposes. You know, three scones wouldn't matter in our perishing world. But the thing is, yes, we are in this perishing world, but we are of something much greater, of something eternal, everlasting, in the world, not of the world, right? That's how we're supposed to live, in time and space, while knowing that there is a greater reality beyond all of that, usually just beyond our grasp. Have y'all ever read anything by Parker Palmer? Anyone know that name? He's good. He's, he's a name you should know. He's a scholar and educator uh, coming out of the Quaker tradition. He's involved with the folks at Pendle Hill down in Pennsylvania. Um, his book, Courage to Teach, that's probably his most famous one. It's highly regarded. And another one, uh, Let Your Life Speak, which is on discernment, which is a Quaker specialty, um, had a profound impact on my own vocation in life. But uh, Parker Palmer had another great line, had a great line in another of his books about education that opens up our scripture a bit today. The book is called To Know As We Are Known, A Spirituality of Education. Good. And the line is, in Christian tradition, truth is not a concept that works, but an incarnation that lives. Not a concept that works, but an incarnation that is. There are so many needs in the world. Needs that, that we individually have, that our society as a, soul, as a whole has. So many needs, overwhelming needs, and they can overwhelm us. I mean, all the climate stuff totally overwhelms me. I mean, what needs to be done is so massive that it makes me feel that nothing I can do will make one iota of difference. But sometimes I feel like just shrugging my shoulders and doing nothing. You know the feeling, right? What is me driving to town one extra time going to matter to anything? Nothing. But you know that feeling. Of course you do. You know, and from childhood poverty, conditions in prison, how, you know, how am I going to help my child through whatever traumatic thing my child needs help with, to how will we afford a new roof for the church? We don't, but, but it's, a, it's a, you know, for instance, you know, how does whatever I have to offer matter? Could I possibly make a difference with what I have? It's only three scones or five loaves and a couple of fish. We're all accustomed to overwhelming needs. 
you know, be it as a parent, a partner, or a spouse, a member of a church, or a citizen of an imperfect society. Everything we know about what it will take to solve the problems we face is mostly beyond imagination. COVID is exploding again all over the place, almost exclusively due to people not choosing not to get vaccinated. And anyone feel overwhelmed by the prospect of convincing 30 plus percent of our population to get vaccinated? Whew. Or homelessness. I mean, out in Eugene, nearly 2% of the population of the city was on the streets. 2%. That is so many people, thousands of them in the small city. And when affordable housing averages $250,000 per unit, housing everyone is just not possible. Not the way we've been doing it, for sure. Or the church, it's dying. Not this one, we're doing quite well, actually, thriving. But the church with the big C is shrinking at between 3 and 5% per year, depending on the denomination. As good Episcopalians, we're right down the middle at shrinking about 3.5% per year <laughs> for at least the past decade. You know, what are we supposed to do about that? Or the 5,000 hungry people who just heard the rabbi preach? In Christian tradition, truth is not a concept that works, but an incarnation that lives. We should always expect miracles to happen, because they do, all the time. Maybe not biblical-type miracles, you know, those are pretty unsubtle, but miracles, they happen all the time. You just need to have the eyes to see them and the ears to hear them happening. Because the truth is that five loaves of bread will never feed 5,000 people. Or here in Hancock County, Maine, where we have a few dozen folks who are unhoused, we're never gonna get everyone off the street. Besides a lack of will and critical housing shortages, not everyone wants to come in or is capable of being inside. Those are practical truths, as Parker Palmer says, truths that work or don't as they were. The truth we need to embrace the one that our prayers and hymns, the mass itself, the very beating heart of this community point to is not one that works, that's a low bar, but to Jesus Christ, an incarnation that lives. Living in our fallen world, a world of apparent scarcity, we are blessed by the very ground of being. We are enfolded in the fabric of existence in God. What things seem what seems possible is so often very, very far from what is actually possible. Because what most truly is, the most ultimate reality, is Jesus Christ. He is the incarnation that lives, and we live through him. What this means simply is that there is so much more going on in the world. So much more, as Paul prays, that we can ask or imagine. Now, one of the commentaries I was reading held up Mother Teresa as an example of the incarnation that lives manifesting in the world. And she, she, she witnessed the, the crushing poverty in um, Calcutta, and she formed the Missionaries of Charity. There were 13 of them originally, 13 in Calcutta. What is that among so many? Now, they have hardly solved the problems of Calcutta. It's still a disaster there. But the order now has thousands of members and millions, millions have been served and saved by those dedicated women. Or think about Millard and Linda Fuller. Anyone know about them? You know, the founders of Habitat for Humanity. They started by making one house habitable for one family. By now, 29 million homes have been restored, preserved, or built. Now that is a drop in the bucket when it comes to solving the housing problems of our nation. But the profundity of the assistance to those families cannot be underspoken. Like homelessness is overwhelming in Eugene. And our little church out there, we couldn't do much. What are we gonna do? A little, little Episcopal church in the hills. But we did build four tiny homes. They're eight foot by 16 foot mounted on trailers. And now four people have a safe place to live while they pull their lives together. I mean, that does nothing to solve homelessness as a problem, but it did a lot to solve homelessness as a problem in those four people's lives. Or vaccine hesitancy. Like, no one can wave a wand or sign a law to correct the misconceptions about vaccines that have taken hold, no one. But maybe you can talk to your brother-in-law in a way that he can hear, or their doctor can, 
or maybe not being able to come to church is just one more little nudge towards making a different, a better decision. Or the solutions to a shrinking church isn't contemporary music or slick marketing or more online opportunities or, or better programming. The solution is being a true witness to the life and teaching of Jesus Christ. And you, yes, you, telling someone you know about it. Inviting someone, one person, to church. That's the only thing that will actually save the church, church people spreading the word. Because the truth that we spread here doesn't work in any meaningful sense of the world, of the word, but it is an incarnation that lives. I mean, just look around. So what does this all mean? Well, a professor of mine at Divinity School who taught the class with the best name of a class ever, it was the, the political economy of misery. That was a, <laughs> it was a scorcher. Um, but but she, she taught, uh, don't expect a spectacle, right? If we expect every march to be a million people strong, we are going to be disappointed. You can't give a six-figure lead gift? Well, listen to Tim and, and, and give from your estate. Tim will be talking a little bit about the planned giving campaign um, during announcements. You should have gotten something in the mail, right? Or, or your child is facing terrible challenges. Try to make one thing okay. That good food is available. That the house is clean. Or a lifetime of sobriety seemed daunting. How about today? Just don't drink today. Tomorrow, maybe, probably tomorrow. Just not today. You can't cure poverty in Hancock County. We cannot do that here. But we can make one person's life better today, make it better? I mean, do you have 5,000 to feed and only have five loaves of bread and a couple of fish and can think only, but what are they among so many people? Remember that Jesus at the conclusion of his earthly ministry had only 12 really dedicated followers and one of them was a dud. Those tiny steps we can do can matter more than we can ask or imagine. God did not give you what you need to solve the problems of the world or of your own simple private life. But the incarnation that lives, lives at this table, lives in the word of God, lives in the heart that beats in each and every chest that gathers here. The incarnation that lives will do more for us than we can ask or imagine. To God be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Now let us contemplate our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page five in our service booklet. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of from being with the Father. Through him all things made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he is born on Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And God's kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. We yearn for the fullness of God that Christ may dwell in us and we in him. 
We thank you for the gift of life and for our connection with all that you have made. May we delight in your creation and protect it. Fill us with the fullness of God. Amen, Amen. Lord, Lord hear you. our prayer. We thank you for creative, compassionate leaders throughout the world. May they devote themselves to justice, peace, and the common good. Amen, Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. We thank you for the endless and beautiful diversity of humanity. May we recognize and celebrate your image in every person we meet. Amen, Lord, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. We thank you for the promise of your presence in our lives. May our concern for those among us who are hurting bring us to prayer, and may our care for them be healing balm. We pray especially for Andrea, Art, Arthur, Mary Boyd, Harry and Marie Bissell, Russell Dishinger, Edward Dufresne, Giffy Full, Grace High, Jack Hooper, Jill Justin, Jenny, Kyla, Kira and John Klinger, Keegan, Joanne Creston, Ed Manuel, Fred Marston, Sophie Partridge, Ronan, Dana Robson, Dennis Robertson, Carla Rosenzweig, Mary Semler, Linda Slavin, Kathy Smith, Peggy Smith, Marshall Smith, Terry Stephen Smith, Donnie Smith, Fred Stein, Marilyn Stewart, Lynn Swayze, Janet and Julia Swayze, Judy Thomas, Gerald Wheeler, Holly Whalen, Nell Whiting, and Persis Williams. Amen, Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you for the gift of new life in this world and the hope of new and everlasting life in the world to come. May those who have gone before us overflow with the fullness of your never ending love and light. Amen. Amen. For your our prayer. Our prayer. We pray for those who are celebrating birthdays this week, especially John Faulkner, Kate McLeod, Anne Gilchrist, Elizabeth Richardson, Jane Hooper, Carlton Russell. Amen, Amen, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those in the armed services, especially Abigail, Kai Carino Mings, James Crow III, Andy Detmer, Brian Haley, Sean Haley, Kyler Hall, Douglas Hamilton, Peter McGuire, Eric Partridge, Kevin West. Amen, Amen Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O Master of might and merciful judge, in our weakness, we turn to you for help. Hear us and come to our rescue. You have promised to hear our prayers and we raise them in the name of Jesus. And so we do, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please rise. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us greet one another with the sign of Christ's love.
Now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice unto God. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, you proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. This is God's table. All are welcome here. Our post-communion prayer is found at page nine in our service booklet. Let us pray. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacraments of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Jesus our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated while we have a few announcements. Um, but first off, I just want to thank everyone. Uh, last time I was here, this place was packed and the bishop was here and we had a great time. Um, it was wonderful. Thank you for all of the thoughts and prayers and all that. And and, but really, you know, the celebration of new ministry is about a new ministry happening here in this parish amongst us. And uh, as I keep saying, and, and I keep feeling that there is a lot of really good stuff going around here. Maybe it's just below the surface, but our potential here is fantastic. Uh, and it's a very exciting time to be here at St. Francis. So, so thank you all for your part in, uh, in marking that day. It was, it was quite wonderful. And we have a good bishop, don't we? Yeah. He's, he's good. Um, so a couple of things. So the nominations for the Emily Award are due on the 13th of August. The Emily Award is recognition of someone who has given um, above and beyond efforts to the life of the parish. And uh, in the 
complicated year we've had. There's lots of energy that has gone into this place. So, so please consider uh, who you think might be deserving of that. Uh, their nomination forms on the front table. Again, um, bring them back and um, uh, give them to the usher, I guess, on one of these weeks, and, uh, and it'll get to the vestry. Um, we have our last chance today for the members and friends list. When you go down for coffee hour, uh, please uh, make sure that if there's any changes or additions, if you're, if you're not in the book, um, which you should know if you're not in the book, uh, please sign up for it. Otherwise, make any corrections that need to be made there. Um, and we have uh, two job openings here. Um, one, we are hiring someone for the family, children, and youth position, which we haven't Barbara's not being overwhelmed with calls. So if you know anyone who might be a good fit for that position, please let us know and we'd love to talk to them. Um, and also our cleaners of, of several years um, have told us that they have to, to uh, leave this job. So we are in the, David is interviewing someone this week, um, but if you do have anyone you know that has a cleaning business or is, is a housekeeper um, and is interested in looking at a slightly larger job, it's still not, was it four hours a week? Something like that, ish. You know, uh, we pay well and it's nice working conditions. Um, so uh, if anyone is, if you know someone who might fit that bill, please do let us know. Um, and if, if the interviews don't work out this week, then, then we'll come back to them. So um, I know that Tim wants to talk for a moment about planned giving. Tim. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, those of you who have seen me give you these presentations before used to think if I asked you for money. I'm not going to do that today. Uh, I'm talking to you on behalf of the Plan Giving Committee, and what we want you to do is to join the Legacy Society of St. Francis of Assisi. This society has no bylaws, it has no roster of membership. The only way you know you're a member is because you've done something, you've done something yourself that brings you into the uh, ambit of the society. And what is that? What we're asking you to do is make a plan here to St. Francis by the Sea that takes effect not now, but at your death. Do it by will or by some beneficiary designation, an insurance or a retirement plan. Lots of ways in which you can do this. And one of our messages to you is that this is something that almost everybody can do. It's not just for the wealthy. Anybody can do it. And a gift of any size is, is quite welcome. Uh, one of the lessons we learned today is that out of a little bit, a great deal can happen. And uh, so that would be true of a small gift to a plan here. So uh, we wrote you a letter and most of you have probably received a letter from the plan giving committee. And it includes uh, a couple of ways you can respond. One way is through this uh, orange P card, which if you don't see it in front of you now, you will within the next week or so, one of these. And the other is uh, by way of a nice note addressed to the treasurer, in which you fill out your concerns or your wishes or your uh, information about plan giving. Uh, again, as I say, this is, for everybody. Anybody can do this. You don't have to be wealthy to do this. So what can we say anymore? Um, I don't want to delay the point. We'll be back with you again sometime in the fall or in the winter. And remind you again that you should consider a gift of plan giving uh, in a way that benefits St. Francis at some point in time. And why would you do this? Why would you do this? Well, maybe it's because of all the things you do for St. Francis, they make up your legacy, but a, a financial gift is also a part of your legacy and it can live on when you're no longer here. And the, who knows the vicissitudes that any institution will face in the years to come. And certainly having some financial resources is a way of helping this institution, St. Francis by the Sea, carry on its mission. So I'm going to end by again asking you all to seriously consider a planning gift to St. Francis. Uh, there is no timeline on this, so it's, and it usually requires some thought, and maybe, uh, heaven forbid, you have to talk to your lawyer, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> they're not all bad. <laughs> 
So anyway, in the end, again, my desire you to do this, and thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Well said, Councillor. Yes. Um, yeah, so we, we have um, 11 people have already signed up, you know, that we know about have given gifts. And, and since I've been here, all the gifts we've gotten in were not people on that list. 11 people signed up for a legacy gift for an institution this size is remarkable. So Tim and Judy, thank you so much for the work you've done on it. Uh, it, it's, it, it will. You know, as, as the baby boom generation goes off to brighter shores, uh, it will be the single largest transfer of wealth in the history of humanity. Um, and this is the way that you all can make sure that the church, which is not full of people that are still working, um, continue on into the future. So, uh, so please do consider that ministry, those gifts. Anything else for the good of the order? Sarah, anything from Vestry? No? Yeah. Uh, Melissa and John Paul are in Michigan with family this week. So, okay. Well, wonderful. Um, we have coffee hour downstairs, so I look forward to seeing you there. Um, I am off this week, um, but just for the week, I'll be back at church on Sunday. Um, and, and Father Tim will be preaching for us, opening up the word as we enter the Bread of Life discourse in John. So it's an exciting time in our, we have our, our year of Mark, but we have a little, little blip of John there for a few weeks. So, uh, so thank you in advance, Tim. Um, so I am around, um, but just not in the office for the coming week. So our final hymn is, O oh Love, How Deep, How Broad, How High.
I, I totally forgot the most important announcement of the week. Um, we have a new member of St. Francis. His name is Fox Wall. He is two weeks old now, and uh, Claire and Keith are, are doing extremely well. So do hold uh, the newest member of St. Francis, Baby Fox, in your prayers, and, and we will see them soon enough. You'll see them soon enough. Otherwise, let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank you.